What's up guys, welcome back to Fisher Hex. In this video I'm going to show you how to make your own float switch holder. Now I purchased most of my float switches on eBay in bulk, so they don't come with a float switch holder, that's just how it is. Now the most cost effective way is to make your own. Now you can buy one of these on eBay itself for like $12 to $15 and then you have shipping on top of that. So you're looking at like $20 for a switch that might have cost 89 cents. It's just not worth it, so you're better off just making your own. Uh, this is the design I like to use. Basically, it's just one bend, and then I use suction cups. You can use a magnet if you so choose. I know that I have a couple that I use magnets on. Um, but this is just the design I'm going to show you to do it now because this is the most cost-effective design. This tire build, not including the flow switch, was less than $3. All right, it's uh, very simple, okay? So let's get into the equipment, and we'll get into making this. Okay, here's the equipment that you'll need to make this float switch. A piece of acrylic, obviously thinner is okay it's just a flow switch so you really don't need a thick piece of acrylic plus it bends a lot easier if it's thinner all right so acrylic two by four that we will use here in a second to assist us in making the correct angle and bending the acrylic itself a six pack of suction cups i got at home depot for about two bucks a butane mini torch i got that actually at pet boys uh, i was under 20 bucks which is pretty sweet and it came with an entire can of butane as well so a marker to make the line on the acrylic a drill bit to drill the hole for the suction cups and the uh, float switch itself and a square there to kind of make the line uh, straight all right the first thing you want to do is cut the acrylic to the width of the float switch now it really doesn't matter how wide it is again it is just a float switch so it doesn't need to be that strong um i usually keep mine about an inch to an inch and a half and um so let's go ahead and we'll just mark that real quick, generally where we want that to be. All right, and then we will come here and do this side real quick. Now I'm not gonna use up this entire cut here, probably gonna use three quarters of it maybe. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this real quick. All right guys, our acrylic is cut and ready to go. Now we just need to make our bend. Let's take a quick look at the original flow switch. As you can see, it's just gonna be the one bend there. Now, we're gonna use this two by four to assist us in heating and bending and then holding the acrylic in place while it cools down, all right? So you just have to determine where you wanna bend it. So we're just gonna go ahead and wing it here. It's not gonna be anything special. Get our little torch here to work. All right, so kind of gonna do it here. Now you're gonna wanna heat one side, heat both sides. You're gonna see it starting to bend a little bit. All right. All right, so I held that on the two by four for about three minutes until it wasn't moving and seemed pretty stable. All right. Um, it's very important that you hold it in place because if it dries just a little bit off, your flow switch won't be even, all right? So um, now we just need to uh, make the second cut here to determine the, you know, the suction cups. We're gonna use two of them, all right? So we're just gonna make that next cut here and we'll come right back. All right, our acrylic is bent, ready to go. All we need to do now is drill the holes for the flow switch and the suction cup. So our first one's gonna be in the bottom here for the flow switch. So let's go ahead and do that. Make sure this is brittle stuff. I didn't want to crack it in half while I was trying to do it. All right, let's move on to the suction cups now. Be very careful with this acrylic because it breaks easily. There's all three, two suction cups and the flow switch. So let's go ahead and put this together. First things first, let's go ahead and put the flow switch in there. All right, a little screw. All 
And if you are using thin acrylic, don't screw it on too tight. This stuff really does break easily. All right, so the suction cups can be a little bit of a pain, but you want them to be tight. So you gotta just kind of get them in there. Takes a minute. Check it out guys, the finished float switch holder. Now this is just a particular design I like to use for my refugium. Um, another very common design is the one that has the low level and the high level float switches for the auto top off. That'd be pretty cool to use on this as well. Um, you can also use magnets or you can have it bent to hang over the top of the uh, sump itself. It's up to you. But this is the design I choose to use right now and it's the most cost effective, all right? So what we're gonna do in our next video is install this in the refugium. It's going to be the backup to uh, basically it's going to turn off the uh, auto top off if the level ever was to get too high and we are going to install it in our uh, breakout box that we built in the previous video and then program it in the apex all right also set up the alarms and all that good stuff for it as well all right guys so i appreciate you watching go ahead and click the button below for subscribe there's plenty of videos coming out as you guys know if you've been here for a while i try to get out three or four videos a week i know that uh you guys have been asking for some content, so I'm trying to get out that content request. All right, so again, guys, I appreciate you watching the videos, and I will see you next time. Later.